So I'm pleased to announce and, and introduce our first speaker today. Uh, that's Marshall Sanders. Uh, many of you may know that Marshall Sanders was trained by Vice President Al Gore to give his slideshow on the climate. And uh, Marshall then went on to give that slideshow over 43 times to close to 3,000 people. In 2007, Marshall founded uh, Citizens Climate Education and Citizens Climate Lobby, uh, which, as you know, teaches and supports citizens in lobbying. Uh, their members of Congress, the media, and their fellow citizens in order to create the political will for a stable climate. Uh, M Marshall, if that wasn't distinguished enough, Marshall's also the uh, founder and the former chairman of the board of Grameen de la Frontera, which was a microcredit lender in Sonora, uh, Mexico, and has served on the board uh, and various microcredit organizations as well. So please welcome Mar Marshall. Very, very much. Hello, everybody. Hello. Good morning. Can you hear me okay? Say yes. Okay, well, welcome, everybody. And it is a thrill to be here. And hello, hello, hello. Well, um, thanks for the invitation, too. Um, I stood in front of uh, 29 people. Uh, to launch the very first uh, uh, group start workshop. Um, we talked for about three hours, and near the end, with my heart in my throat, I needed four people. I needed four people to have a group, otherwise it just wasn't going to work. And... Uh, so with my heart in my throat, I asked people, who will join this, to do this chapter with me? Well, all 29, all 29, everybody in the room, and I didn't know half of them, said, uh, raise their hand and, uh, and join. And we started with uh, three chapters. So as I look out over all of you today and see, I don't know, maybe almost 300 or 200 anyway, uh, please know I am uh, moved. I am moved to see you here. So thank you very much. Uh, I want to hear from people today, and we'll have a microphone up here. I think that's the best way to do it. And uh, if it works out like I hope, then uh, you will be talking more than me. Mark's going to come up in a few minutes to help me out. Um, there's something. There's something called the citizens, uh, the citizens climate lobby way, CCL way. And um, every once in a while, over the years, somebody said, "Well, Marshall, you should write it down." Well, I first of all, I didn't know what it was. <laughs> and uh, but I did you know me I tried to write it down well no luck and um, so I kind of gave it up and um, then unknown to me uh, I uh, partner in the San Mateo group um, Leslie Beatty uh, told Mark that she would like to write it down but she was going to do it differently than I was going to do it. She was going to interview you <laughs> and find out what you say the values are. And, uh, well, I thought it was a little dangerous. <laughs> and, and I didn't know Leslie either. And uh, so, but, but Mark said, just go ahead. Just go ahead. So don't worry about it. And uh, so let's, let's just see. Um, well, Leslie um, has a Bachelor of Arts from uh, Harvard, and she has uh, an MBA from uh, Berkeley. And so she was, you know, just eminently, and she uh, had uh, employment at Yahoo and, uh, and this sort of thing of values and all like that. And uh, Sun runs another big company. So, you know, as I said, Mark told her to go ahead. Go ahead. Um, so 
what I'm about to do is to Taylor, raise your hand. Taylor's going to put the, the val th these values that, uh, that Leslie found in talking to our partners, we're going to put them up on the board, on the, on the screen, and then, uh, and I'm going to read them, maybe Mark will read a few, and we, we, we will uh, then hear from you if you've had an experience of that value. Okay, fair enough. And uh, let's just see. Oh, uh, please keep your responses to about two or three sentences so we can hear from as many po people as possible. So again, uh, these are the uh, values that uh, Leslie uh, found. And, uh, and uh, Mark, you want to come up here and uh, join me? And by the way, I think that we went from, you know, from nobody to uh, all, all of you and, and many, many more uh, because we uh, live these values. We live them, or at least we try to. And uh, so here we are. Uh, the first one, is, okay, great, great. So first one is uh, being nonpartisan, right? Okay, being nonpartisan. Our group is open to all who are serious about si solving climate change. You are welcome no matter where you live, what you wear, or what you do for a living, or who you voted for in the last election. We work with uh, elected officials and community leaders from across the political spectrum because we believe that everyone is a potential ally. Okay? Like that? Uh, that's uh, from our partners. Now, uh, for this to work, somebody's going to ha have to come to the microphone and um, and share if you've had an experience of that value. And if people don't come to the microphone and share, blah, 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 then, then there's going to be a short presentation. <laughs> My name's Larry Peranich. I'm from the North County San Diego chapter. I'm a lifetime Republican, and I'd been to other environmental organizations and just not felt welcome or appropriate there. And I really appreciate CCL's attitude on this. It's made me feel at home. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You want to say anything? Okay, go ahead. Pardon. Hello, I'm Magnus Hahn from the Pasadena chapter. Uh, and I guess the story for me is, is uh, I have, uh, I work with somebody who uh, is a very staunch Trump supporter. And I've been working on him with respect to climate for four and a half years, and I finally got his endorsement for a carbon fee and dividend. Wow. All right. All right, thank you very much. Okay, uh, last one on this value. Yes, yes, go ahead. Hi, I'm Katie. Um, I'm a first year at Pomona College in Claremont, but I'm actually from a small town in Southeast Texas. Um, and so I grew up in a different political climate than you know here in California, and you know, my experience with CCL was kind of the motivating factor of being able to reach back into my community and connect with people. Even if I don't agree with them on politics, at least we can work together for a common good. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, great. Okay, next value, uh, Taylor. Uh, relation relationships. We take the most generous approach to other people as possible. Appreciation, gratitude, and respect. We listen, we work to find common values, and we endeavor to understand our own biases. We are honest and firm. We know that there is a place for protest, but our approach is to build consensus. That's what will bring enduring change. That's why Elected officials and their staff, no matter what their politics, say they are happy to see us and mean it, and mean it, okay? Okay, for this to work, we need some volunteers to come to the microphone. So my congressman is Dana Rohrbacher. 
<laughs> okay. <laughs> who sent me two texts in the last two weeks. And the, I'll just mention the line of the first text. The first line of the first text was two weeks ago. Mark, thanks for not giving up on me. Ah, uh, all right. He went on. The, the negative part is he went on to tell me why I was wrong. <laughs> uh, Mark, did you ever go have a beer with uh, Rohrbach? Uh, John Forney, uh, Inland uh, Valley uh, Citizen Climate Lobby Chapter. And uh, I'm also the uh, president of the Democratic Club of Claremont. And one of my good friends says, John, you don't even know any Republicans. <laughs> and I says, yes, I do. We had a good Republican over for dinner the other night, one of our city council people. And uh, they said, well, how do you know he's a good Republican? I said, well, he believes in science, and he believes in citizens' climate lobby. <laughs> oh, my mic. There we, there we go. go. Okay, good. Hi, my name is Davia Rivka. I'm from Los Angeles. Um, I have a blog, and in my blog, I talk a lot about my own. Um, I'm going to cry. Um, I talk about my own process, how hard this is for me. And I got a comment recently, uh, personal, personal comment to me, from somebody who really believes that climate change is real and is really frustrated about it, and it was a very nasty letter to me for what I'm not doing good enough. And it was really frustrating. And it took me a long time to decide whether to respond, how to respond, because the, the note actually had some really good suggestions in it. But it was couched with such anger that I had to keep going back to who am I, what is this work that I'm doing, and how can I engage this person in a way that will further the conversation? Wow. Okay. Amazing. Thank you. <laughs> Personal power. We use our voices to be heard. This simple act transforms us from spectators to engaged citizens, and it reveals the true nature of democracy to us. We are volunteer-driven, trusting volunteers to make important decisions and to create and develop things that will be valued by Citizens' Climate Lobby. We can wait 20 minutes for each. <laughs> <laughs> Here's Carl, come on. Yeah, I'm Carl. Um, I never did a political thing in my life. Right into the microphone. I never volunteered for anything in my life. I took care of my family, and I figured that was good enough. And being a banker's son, I saved my money and I retired early. And I thought that was good enough. And then I realized when I learned more about climate change that I hadn't taken care of my kids. And I sure as hell hadn't taken care of my grandkids. So here I am, personally empowered. Yay! <laughs> and it's all his fault. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I um, name. What's your name? Oh, hi. So I'm uh, I'm Marshall James. I'm from the West Los Angeles Los Angeles County chapter. Uh, so the the environmental movement has always been the political, um, yeah, you know, like the the political moment that's most always captured my attention. And when I got involved with Citizens Climate Lobby. 
the fact that I pretty quickly moved into a role as a liaison and got to meet with my congressperson and hear a little bit about how the policy sausage gets made, um, I felt that was very empowering. It's got me to go on and coordinate CCL activities with other environmental organizations in Los Angeles and see ways that we can support each other in uh, the fight for a sustainable future and has even empowered me to start uh, public awareness and education campaigns on the internet because there's a lot of people I think we've all encountered, there's a lot of people who really want to do good but they're not nerdy about it the way that we are, right? Like they're not <laughs> They're not reading all the environmental news. They're not really excited about the latest developments in energy policy. Um, but we are. And I find that when we talk to people, you find that there are a lot of people who are really excited about the stuff that we know. And I think part of, like you're saying, part of our personal power is to just be communicators, to rally the troops, so to speak, to let people know that the, the fight is winnable and that we are kind of winning it. All right. Thank you. Did you say your name was Marshall? Second one I've ever met. So, quality name. Quality. I like it. I like it. I'm Susan, and I'm from the San Fernando Valley chapter. And I'm going to do a big yes and to Marshall, because I think one of the beautiful things about Citizens Climate Lobby, it has um, restored some personal power to me as a citizen. I first learned about the organization at a vegan potluck in Park City, Utah. <laughs> and there were people who had retired there from the Pasadena chapter, and they were passing out um, uh, comment letter forms and asking us all to fill them out, which is a really good thing to do in Park City because, you know, their senator is Orrin Hatch. And I thought, wow, that's something I can do. And so I, I became a volunteer, and I started doing that, and then I started tabling. And when I started tabling, I realized that because I learned how I could use my own power as a citizen just by signing that comment form and learning more, I was able to talk to other people at a table, and I've had conversations where I felt like I was able to empower them to take action just by signing that right. form or right. engaging them and getting them more interested. Yeah. So that is the techniques and the tools that this organization use are really gentle but effective ways of engaging citizens to, to be part of this. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much, cool. One more. Yeah, my name is Don Martins, and um, I would like to uh, expand on the tabling idea. Uh, Teresa Santi and I, we table the second Saturday of every month at the Pomona Art Walk. And uh, your suggestion of don't you know, uh, try and argue with climate deniers is a great idea. You know, that does not work. but. Uh, when you talk to somebody, they first think that you want to sell them something. And when you say, no, we're, you know, we're just trying to do something, you know, to increase political will uh, in the climate, uh, uh, they listen to what, you know, you have to say, and then they, you know, they thank you. They, they really appreciate yeah you know, that somebody is trying to do something about global warming. And um, so I, hopefully, I think we are doing something. All right. Thank you very much. Focus. We are focused on what we believe as the single most impactful solution to climate change, a national carbon fee and dividend. We know that it will not solve all solve the problem entirely and appreciate the work that our friends and other groups are doing. So that we can be effective, we do not let ourselves get distracted by work that does not support our core purpose. After we accomplish our goal, we will tackle the next most Im impactful solution. Okay. So I'd like 10 speakers on this one. <laughs> <laughs> Here comes Dadla. 
all, all my buddies come up to save me. Hi, Marshall. Hi, Mark. Whew. I, I want to thank Leslie and whoever worked on this stuff because I worked at a good number of companies and you know I, I'd read the mission statements and I'd read the value statements and so on. I just I can really get behind this. I I I have a really hard time, you know, being the go go company man sometimes when, you know, all that stuff sounds kind of good, but it's not real. This stuff she just did a wonderful job and that that I can say that you know we say this to, to people we show it we show it to them when when new people join because this speaks to the heart and it's just so straight up and and candid and honest so I want to thank Leslie. Yeah, thank Leslie. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes. Hi, Dan Kegel, Mid City, LA. I, I just want to say I've never seen a more effective solution to the kitten herding problem. It's really hard to keep everybody in the same direction, and this group does it really well. All right, thank you very much, Dan. I think one of the things that this statement says is that there's a lot of different groups with a lot of different pieces in this. There's Al Gore's group that's about um, making people aware and educated, and um, you know we're, we're working together with even the the. the um, the companies that make a lot of green technologies possible. And then our piece is getting people educated and, and working with the legislators, working on policy. And so we, each of us can get distracted in so many ways, but it's like, I can think to myself, what's the thing so I can work with my city council person? What can I do so I'll get to Washington and work with them and congressmen and things like that? So I really feel like that, that focus really helps me and I think it helps all the people in this room to keep on track. Yeah, right. fa fabulous, fabulous, <laughs> amazing, yes. Good morning, uh, my name is Jordan Salito, I'm from San Marino up the road here. Uh, and I, I just want to tell you, I th this very slide is the thing that most attracted me to the Citizens of Climate Lobby. I spent 25 years at Warner Brothers, the last 15 overseeing their international operations, a huge far-flung enterprise. And the, I found consistently that the biggest danger for large organizations like for-profit, non-profit, is sort of mission creep and loss of focus to where they start trying to do too many things and as a result aren't able to do any one thing well. This prevents that. I think it's absolutely the winning strategy for this organization. It's why I'm involved. Whoa, thank you. So thank much. you. Good morning. Oh. My name is Jeanette Royston, and I'm with the Claremont um, Citizen Climate Lobby. And I want to thank Penelope and Catherine and all. Um, this is my first time here, and um, I could have gotten up and spoke to each of the values prior to this, but um, I'm compelled now to speak to this mainly because for the past year or so, I've been involved in and out um, of climate um, control. And but what, why I'm here now at this mic is because I appreciate the honesty that I am reading. Mm. It actually states we cannot solve the problem in its entirety. And I think that needs to be said in the same sentence or paragraph that you are talking or trying to win someone over. And I am here to learn more that I can promote this climate, uh, citizen climate lobby. So I will continue to use this focus and that statement. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. One more. One more. We need a tall guy in a black suit. <laughs> Good morning, Marshall. I'm Steve Hansen. I'm from the San Luis Obispo Bunch, and um, uh, as, a, as a physician, um, I've always been concerned about the direct health effects of climate and climate change on health, and uh, this statement uh, helps. It helps that 25% that the polls show nowadays, especially young people, that just feel like there's nothing that can be done, that uh, we're on the road to some very bad place that we can't do something about. I, I, th I found that it helps to stick another word in there, a national carbon pollution fee. People resonate yeah. with the word pollution. Nobody likes pollution. 
and that helps to get their attention a little bit sometimes. Yeah. And um, so I love CCL, keep it up. Yeah, thank you. I've heard this, uh, pe other people have said uh, pollution. So it's like, I don't want to bother anybody, over, but students, I just love to hear from a student or two. It's like, and, uh, and there's no requir requirement at all. So uh, where are we now? Integrity. Integrity. Okay, we got two more. Integrity. We are prepared to do our research. We are always on time to meetings. Our, <laughs> our approach is thoughtful and thorough. We consult experts and use data. We are open to new information. In fact, we solicit opposing opinions. We refine our solutions to make them better. We follow up when we are asked, we keep on. Yay! <laughs> okay. All right. Okay. I have no trouble waiting a long time. <laughs> Morning. Oh, good morning. Um, you know, I'm Wayne Taylor, a re retired professor for, of biochemistry, and I, uh -huh. I love this because this is almost like a definition of science. You know what I mean? Like open to new information, refine our solutions to make them better. I love that. And in fact, you know, everything keeps on moving and changing, and so by adjusting, we will definitely get there. In fact, we can see it happening right now. Thank you. Thank you, Professor. Thank you. Okay, we got another one on that? Yeah, Mrs. Saunders. <laughs> Hi, I'm Pam Saunders, and um, I'm married to Marshall, this one. And I just want to tell you that um, for the staff at CCL, and for my husband, who sits in the living room at night and talks to people on the phone, they do appreciate hearing from other people. Marshall will sit in the living room on the phone and he will listen to what people say. And he doesn't make them wrong, but he appreciates what they have to say. And so if anybody has anything for Mark or Marshall or any of the staff members that doesn't fall right in line with whatever, they are open to hearing what it is. And they discuss it in group uh, staff calls. So they do have a very high level of integrity and I am so proud of them for being open to what's out there in the world that doesn't fall right in line with what we're thinking. So if you've got a complaint, let them know. <laughs> Thank you, my beloved wife of 50, 53 years. Okay, yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Hi, Meg Mathias from the Inland Valley chapter. Not a complaint at all. I think CCL is wonderful, but a recent awareness that I've come to, and that is that the phrase "carbon fee" and "dividend," dividend speaks more appropriately to the higher socioeconomic levels of our society. Carbon fee and rebate might communicate more with uh, a broader group of people, particularly since the dividend aspect of it is better for two-thirds of the households that are going to get it. It's a progressive way to move forward economically. But in fact, that phrase doesn't communicate as effectively with the broad scope socioeconomically. That's an excellent point. Excellent point. Thank you very much. All right. Um, uh, we're going to go on to the last one. <clears throat> last one, optimism. We believe that people are good and that democracy works. We are confident that our approach will work because we see progress. We stand for a solution, not in protest of other solutions. We don't expect perfection from ourselves or others. 
This is a process that we know that people can improve. This is a process and we know that people can improve. Together, we are a community that offers one another comfort, support, and fun, and fun, and fun <laughs> as, as we work. Okay, yeah, thank you, yeah, great, yeah. Yeah, right here, right here, there we go. On that theme, I wanted to thank the local CCL members for being, and CCL members broadly, not just for the work that they're doing to change our political conversation, but also for being some of the nicest people you'll meet. They've welcomed me into their home and invited me to dinner, and, I'll, and it's just great to be with so many people who are committed to carbon pricing and other smart solutions to making the world a better place. Right. My name is Narayan Gopinathan. I am from San Diego, but I haven't been as active in CCL as I should be. And now's <laughs> the time for me to be more involved. All right, all right, thank you very much. Miranda, Miranda, where's Sarah? We need Sarah. Hello, Marshall, hi, Mark. Hi, um, Miranda. <laughs> my name's Miranda. Um, I am an intern at headquarters in San Diego, um, and I'm also a San Diego State student. And I have to say that um, the optimism that just flows from the CCL headquarters office is incredible. Um, it was something that really struck me, and um, I've definitely taken that and into regard in my job as the student recruitment intern for um, the headquarters office at San Diego State. And um, I go into classrooms and announce our June International Conference and invite students to come. Um, and through other means, we fundraise in other ways to get them there. But um, it's such a way that I, I always encourage and invite people to come because of this optimistic attitude that CCL provides. And I think that we, as a community, do so much with this optimism. So thank you. All right, All right Miranda, thank you very much. Sarah. Hi, Marshall. Um, I'm Sarah Wanis. I'm uh, the membership coordinator for Citizens Climate Lobby. Um, and we promised Marshall that we'd be here in case he needed us to answer some of these. But um, I didn't, I didn't um, for optimism, I think that optimism is one of my favorite parts of Citizens Climate Lobby. And I think that the best example of that is our solutions based focus, um, where we don't approach people with the problem. We approach people with the solution. And I think that that's really what brings so many people to CCL. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Are you a student? Yeah. I All go to, right. I go to Chapman University. <laughs> um, Whoa. Yeah. <laughs> My name is Mallory, and I'm a member of the Long Beach South Bay chapter. And this past November, because of Chapman University in part and CCL, I got to attend the Citizens Climate Lobby um, lobby, you know, I don't, I mean, yeah, lobby day in Washington, D.C. Um, this past November for the first time, and I got to meet with four different representatives or and their staff, but specifically, I got to meet with my representative, Alan Lowenthal, and I got to meet with him face-to-face, -face, which was a really, really cool opportunity for me as an 18-year-old, a girl who has never participated in democracy before this, and so for me, having him uh, say thank you for me coming out there and expressing my opinions and expressing what I want to see in democracy and having him be so responsive to what I wanted was it, was, it made me feel so optimistic about what I can do as a citizen and what my future can be in Citizens Climate Lobby and as an individual and uh, making an impact in Washington DC and for our world and so I just wanna say thank you to CCL for providing that opportunity for me and I am extremely optimistic about the future and yeah, that's it. Okay. <laughs> hey, thank you right back. Thank you right back. Yes. Hi, my name is Lorraine Lundquist, and um, I teach about climate change at Cal State University Northridge. And so that can sometimes be a very um, depressing and pessimistic kind of <laughs> work because I first have to make students aware of what the reality of our climate emergency is and, and the urgency of it. And um, many of them were, you know, are not previously aware. And so it can be, it can be um, something that brings them down. And then it's my job to then bring them back up and show them um, the solutions and the possibility of 
of attacking this challenge and how possible it is. And so I share with the students um, that, first of all, that optimism is, um, you know, I, I, well, I love the, the fact that CCL is embracing optimism as a value that we are choosing. It, I feel like a lot of times people think, you know, they're naturally optimistic or pessimistic or something. It just comes to you. It's just kind of part of your nature. But, but um, I see uh, part of, partly through my work with CCL, I see optimism as a choice that we must um, choose, that it's our duty to choose optimism and to um, embrace that, um, that possibility and believe that it's possible that we can fix this. And uh, so I tell my students I'm a pathological optimist <laughs> um, and that um, I share with them a, a quote from uh, Tom Friedman that says, Pessimists are usually right and optimists are usually wrong, but all of the great changes in the world have always been accomplished by optimists. And so we choose optimism. Thank you. And I appreciate CCL for uh, helping me maintain that optimism to help them. Thank you. Yoo Thank you. Whoa. Whoa. These will be the last three right here. My name is Chris Van Beveren, and I am a proud member of the San Luis Obispo chapter. Cool. Okay. We, have, we have a really great, strong, powerful chapter up there uh, filled with all of these qualities. Uh, our congressman is Salud Carbajal. I have uh, attended a couple of his town halls since his election. He has, he's on the caucus, on the Climate okay, Solutions good. Caucus. Good for you. Which he joined within two weeks of being elected. Uh, he is very well aware of what carbon fee and dividend is all about. The issue is, from our point of view, he feels that it is hopeless. Uh, yeah. And I'm very much hoping that here I will, uh, well, there's 13 of us here at least, so um, that we can find ways to bring him up from that viewpoint. All right, go to work. Thank you very much. Hi, Marshall. Hi, Mike, uh, Mark. Um, I actually just taught a course at uh, Chapman, so I'm happy to see some of my students here, by the way. Uh, but uh, full time, I'm, I'm actually at UCI. I'm an air pollution researcher. Um, what I really like about Citizens Climate Lobby, which is, is outlined here, is the stand for solutions and not just protests. Um, since I was an undergrad uh, 10 years ago, learning about climate change and kind of getting passionate about the issue. Uh, I saw a lot of environmental groups doing the protest thing, and this is just so different. Um, it's, it's effective, and I really like uh, the strategy. And I also wanted to say that uh, CCL has been so empowering to me um, on this issue that uh, I've actually decided to, along with my girlfriend, to take a, a one-year hiatus from work effective uh, this summer uh, to actually advocate for climate change and get more uh, engaged with CCL. And um, we are actually going to be launching a, a road trip in August, going across the entire country to speak right. on climate change All and right. advocate for CCL. So All thank right. you. Thank you. Woo. Thank you. Woo. Where, where did these people come from? My goodness. Uh, hi, everyone. My name is Van. I'm with the uh, Brea Whittier chapter. And I just wanted to mention, we have a high schooler who works very closely with us from California High School. And she has a project um, that seems to fit with what Mr. Reynolds had said about meeting people on their own terms, but at the same time, it might be a distraction. So f on behalf of uh, Emily Via, um, I'm going to leave a copy of her project on each table, if that's OK. And just let us know, is this a distraction or is this useful to CCL? That's all. Thank you for right, Thank you very, very much. Right. Yeah, yeah. Thanks, everybody. Love you. Thank you.